Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll be talking about low power modes, why there is a need for them, how they work on the MSP430 platform and how you can use them. Towards the end of the video I'll also do a demo showing you how much energy the system uses in each of the different power modes. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of the series is to explain embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and with examples of how you can use these concepts in real life. If you want to learn more, make sure to watch the other videos in the playlist as well, which is going to be linked in the pinned comment down below. Quickly, before jumping to today's video, I want you guys to hear a message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. What better way to learn embedded systems than to create your own experimental board and produce it with PCBWay. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to find out how you can order 5 PCBs for less than $25. I've personally used PCBWay before being sponsored by them to order PCBs for myself and over 100 colleagues from university for a class project and the interaction with them has always been great, same as with the quality of the delivered PCBs. No matter how complex your PCB requirements are, PCBWay has got you covered. Alright, so first things first, why do we need these low power modes considering that microcontrollers already use way less power than even the most efficient notebook CPUs? The answer to this question is, in my opinion, at least twofold. Firstly, the use cases for microcontrollers are usually very specific like collecting data or doing some measurements at specific time intervals and sending the data over via a bus to a different part of the system, or let's say reacting to an external interrupt which could be triggered by, let's say, a button press. In this situation, it makes very little sense to keep all of the resources of the microcontroller awake just because you are waiting for a timer interrupt or because you are waiting for the signal edge from the button press to be detected by the microcontroller. In this case, you can go in the low power mode and keep just the resources needed to keep the system going awake and the CPU itself can be turned off, which saves a lot of energy. Secondly, microcontrollers are basically part of everything around us which has power and this also includes a lot of battery powered devices, where it's simply wasteful to not turn off resources when we don't need them. The current drawn by the microcontroller when enabling low power modes can drop by more than a thousand times depending on the low power mode chosen. Okay, so now that we answered that question, let's take a look at the different low power modes of the MSP430 platform. Instead of looking at this pretty messy diagram, I will simplify this down to an easier to understand table. Most MSP430 microcontrollers have one active mode and four low power modes. In order for you to understand these, it's important to first go over the clock signals available in such a microcontroller. There are three types of clock signals you will be using, the most important of which being the master clock or M clock, which is used by the CPU itself and all of the high speed peripherals. The number of peripherals where you can use the master clock as the clock source is very limited, with most peripherals being run by either the SM clock or subsystem main clock or the A clock or auxiliary clock. In a typical application you would have the SM clock running at a high speed in order to run your peripherals and your communication interfaces and the A clock running at 32.768 kilohertz uh, just so you can run your real-time clock and your slow running timers. So coming back to the operating modes. The reason we talked about the clock signals is because in the low power modes what happens most of the time to save energy is we shut down these clock systems progressively and also the peripherals that are being run by these clock systems to save energy. In the active mode, as you probably expect, all of the resources are up and running. By turning low power mode zero on, we disable our CPU, effectively halting the code execution and we are also turning off the master clock given that it no longer has to drive the CPU. A clock and SM clock remain active, meaning that the peripherals which are being driven by these clock signals will continue to work just like normal. Low power mode one keeps the same clock signals active, but disables the DCO or the digitally controlled oscillator if this is not used to source any of the clocks in active mode. If you don't change the initial clock settings, after a reset, the SM clock and the M clock are going to be sourced by the DCO, 
which has the advantage that it's very fast to turn on and the frequency can be set by the user. Low power mode 2 also disables SM clock, which means that only peripherals which are being run by the A clock will continue to work. Low power mode 3 also disables the DCO, regardless of if it is used in the active mode or not. This is not a major concern though, as it takes only about two microseconds to get the DCO up and running. Low power mode 4 shuts off all clock signals, including the crystal oscillator if any is connected. This is basically deep sleep with the mic controller being woken up just by things like port interrupts or brownout resets. There are also some microcontrollers in the family with a low power mode 3.5 and low power mode 4.5, which do have lower power consumption, but the trade-off here is that you are going to lose the RAM information. Now you might be wondering, how hard is it to actually enter low power mode? Well, I'm happy to say it's very easy as all you have to do to enter low power mode is to alter bits in the status register. Or alternatively, you can do this to intrinsic functions like the one you see on the screen right now. And all you do is you call this function, which behind the scenes, of course, alters bits and the status register and enters low power mode for you. Now, of course, what you need to keep in mind is the fact that if you want to, for example, run a peripheral on the SM clock, if you go to, let's say, low power mode three, that peripheral is not going to be running anymore in low power mode. So you need to sort of Keep in mind how your system is designed when you're going to enable low power modes. All right, now it's time for me to show you how much of a difference these power modes make when it comes to current consumption. I wrote a very simple program meant to show you the difference in power consumption between the different power modes, and we will compare the measurements we get with the datasheet values. The code is running on the MSP430 G2553, which is delivered together with the MSP430 G2 launchpad, and we have an ammeter in the circuit supplying the microcontroller in order to measure the current. If you guys want to get the G2 launchpad, I will put a link to Amazon in the description down below. The G2 launchpad has five jumpers connecting the target to the programmer slash debugger. These five jumpers are disconnected in order to eliminate any sort of influence that the programmer could have on our current measurements. Also, the measurements are not conducted while in debugging mode because this influences the measurements a lot. As you can see from the code shown on the screen right now, which is also going to be linked in the description down below, we have started two timers, one being sourced by the SM clock and the other one by the A clock. And all we are doing in the infinite while loop is we are wasting CPU time, basically. We use an interrupt on port one, which gets triggered when we press this button on the G2 launchpad. And what this does is it cycles to the following modes. Active mode at 16 megahertz, active mode at one megahertz, and then low power modes zero through four. The reason we have active modes at both 16 and one megahertz is because the current drawn by the system increases as we use higher clock frequencies. There is of course also an advantage to running at higher clock frequencies, and that is that your instructions will take less time to execute, meaning that you can go into low power modes faster. An important thing to keep in mind, especially for the active power modes, is that our supply voltage is almost 3.6 volts. This matters because the current draw also increases with higher supply voltages. Okay, so at 16 megahertz in active mode, we measured 4.7 milliamps of current, while the datasheet value is 5 milliamps at our supply voltage. The difference comes from the fact that the resolution of my multimeter in this range is of only one milliamp, which means that I can't measure milliamps with decimal numbers. At one megahertz in active mode, I measured a current of 275.2 microamps, while in the datasheet, a typical value of 330 microamps is given at three volts. In low power mode zero and one, we measured a current of 82 microamps, which is higher than the 56 microamps given by Texas Instruments in their datasheet, but that rating is at 2.2 volts instead of our 3.6 volts. As you can tell, the current consumption is the same because we use the DCO to source both SM clock and M clock in active modes, so this resource is not being shut down. Low power mode 2 is a bit interesting. So I measured a current of 2.47 microamps, which is lower than the 22 
microamps from the Texas Instruments datasheet. Also, interestingly, the current remained the same in low power mode 3, which tells me that the DC generator used by the DCO was probably disabled in low power mode 2 as well, even though the DCO is being used to source the SM clock and the M clock in active modes. There may be something that I'm missing and if you know what it is, please feel free to let me know in the comment section, but this is the only plausible scenario that I found. The low power mode 3 current in the datasheet is between 0.7 and 1.5 microamps at 2.2 volts, which I find normal because we are also running uh, a timer off of the A clock in our case and also the supply voltage is higher at 3.6 volts. In low power mode 4, I measure a current of 0.12 microamps, which is well within the range of 0.1 to 0.5 microamps from the datasheet. Just as a conclusion, without taking into consideration any losses from battery aging or other phenomenon, if you were to run the system off a CR2032 battery, you would be able to run it for 2 days in active mode at 16 MHz or for 11 years if you're running the system just in low power mode 3. Now of course it wouldn't make sense to run your microcontroller just in low power mode 3 because if you were to do this then why have a microcontroller in the system in the first place. But this just gives you a perspective about the difference between these modes and how you can conserve battery by using them. Phew, that was a lot of numbers. But even so I left some things out because if I were to include every single detail, the video would just come out too complex. If you want to learn more, there's always the data sheet and the user guide, which I always encourage you guys to take a look at. If you guys found this video helpful, please make sure to like it, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Also, stay tuned for future videos and make sure to leave your suggestions for future topic ideas in the comment section down below. I'll catch up with you in the next video. Stay tuned.